Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. The question that Wendy asked yesterday is that her child eats only 10 things and won't eat anything else. And I said to her, okay, I, we will ask Dr. Grand Pichet about this, but I said, do me a favor, write in. I know she's going to ask, what are the 10 things he will eat? Mm -hmm. And I was very, <clears throat> she wrote right back. I was very interested in the 10 things that he will eat. Grilled cheese, peanut butter sandwich on brown bread, Nutella sandwich, banana bread, a oh. slice of apple, but not more than one slice of apple, hummus on non bread, but not by choice, uh, ensure calorie plus milk and chocolate cake on a birthday only, uh, oh, mini drink, mini drinkable yogurts, uh, chicken soup, ramen noodles, and that's it. Okay. So that's a very interesting list. I can't, yeah, wait and it's a, it's a, it's a fun one. <laughs> like, this is a common thing that I, this is like one of the first questions that I get from parents when I start to work with kids. So, um, you know, so here's, I, I'm trying to answer this question without going into a massive lecture on how the gut works and all the things that we need. But let's, let's take a look at the list. And the list is probably not the, the items that we want. Like, so there's two concepts here. One is, we want our child to eat a more varied diet, and but that's one issue. And the other issue is the diet they have currently is not necessarily the diet we want. And that often happens because we're so nervous about our kids becoming pickier and narrowing their diet even further that we allow them to eat a whole bunch of stuff that we normally, uh, under other circumstances, wouldn't allow them, like a lot of sugar, for instance. So... Let's not worry about the pickiness factor for a minute because, and I know that's hard. Like, I believe me, I know that's hard. And as a parent, we're always worried that the child may <clears throat> just not eat to the point that, you know, it becomes very unhealthy. So you want to keep an eye on that, obviously. And you want to make sure that you have regular checkups with your pediatrician and there's nothing else going on that is of concern. Okay. So we're done that. Now we're going to look at the current list of items and we're going to actually narrow it. It's the opposite of, of what you're thinking, but believe me, you're going to reduce it by taking away certain things. First thing I want you to take away is milk, okay? And when you take away the milk, I'd like you to take it away for about three weeks and then see if that in itself doesn't broaden his diet. Because a lot of times when our kids are eating things that they're allergic to or have that cause inflammation, they will actually just crave that one item and they'll have a lot of it and then they won't eat anything else. I actually experienced this with my own son when he was little and milk was the culprit. And when I took milk away, his diet completely broadened, like he just started eating regular food. But in your case, that might not be the case, but let's start with milk. And, and I don't want you to do this all at once either because you won't know which food is causing what kind of mischief. So that long list that Shannon read, uh, check next to them the things that you consider to be good for him or not good for him, right? So you mentioned that you try to get him to eat hummus, for instance. Okay, that might be one that you want to keep. And there's going to... there. There was so much stuff on there that needs to be eliminated. Pretty, I would start with eliminating anything that has a ton of sugar, like Nutella, for instance, and all these other things that are chocolate, sugar, etc. A lot of times when our kids eat these foods, they really have no interest in eating anything else. I'm actually not worried about your child being picky from a gastrointestinal perspective, which that also happens. I'm a little bit leaning towards he's chosen all sweet things. Listen, if I could have my way, that would be my diet. So I'll, I'll be honest. But so the way that you work it is you take that list, divide it, and say these are the things that are pretty decent or okay for him to eat. These are the things that are just packed with sugar and we're going to get rid of them. And you just literally you get rid of them, 
right? And if it turns out that he just refuses now, he, he won't. He'll eat the other things that you have on the list. For instance, apple, he might actually begin to have more than one slice. Some of the other things you mentioned, and I don't remember, like certain types of nut butters might not be bad at all for him. Those types of things you might want, he will eat more of. If he doesn't, if you notice that he's just not eating anything at all, <clears throat> select one of the items from the bad list, one item, and you can use that temporarily as a reward. Not a lot of it, and it shouldn't be milk. It, I don't remember now all the items, Shannon, but perhaps you can help me pick one that is the least harmful there. Ah, uh, you're on mute. It is milk. I milk. mean, a lot yeah. of it is milk because oh, a, the a lot of the cheese other is items milk. Is milk. Yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah, the the grilled cheese has milk. Um, yeah. Probably the peanut butter sandwich on brown brown bread doesn't have milk. Yeah, so um, maybe just maybe just peanut butter. But if you could, just to be safe, get some gluten free bread. That's very easy to do these days. You can get it at every supermarket. Just any kind of gluten-free bread. He won't really know the difference. In fact, in some cases, I, my daughter is fully gluten-free, and sometimes I steal her bread because it tastes better. So and it and it toasts better. So if you um, if you can like make that the reward, something that's healthy should be the reward. And now you're going to do a kind of shaping exercise, which means you'll have uh, the the basic list. And you'll add to it like 10 more things that you want him to eat, like vegetables, fruits, things that are healthy things, right? And you'll have a few things that are the rewarding items that are not necessarily, that are not bad for him. Like at this point, we need to really consider casein, so the protein in milk, and possibly gluten, the protein in whole grains, to not be on the good list. Those are not necessarily good for most of our kids, in fact, <clears throat> most of us at this point. So I would try to steer away from those things. There are fruits that are that children like because they're very sweet. So like ideally, you might enjoy some berries. You might enjoy pineapple. There are certain fruits that kids consider to be almost um, like a dessert. In fact, there are non-dairy uh, desserts as well that you could buy. For instance, you could buy him non-dairy uh, um, ice cream. So there are certain things that could enter the, the whole diet and be classified as reward, rewarding foods that you've not even experienced until now. So bring those in. Have a nice array of four or five things that are rewarding. And then you gradually start introducing, just like the previous question, you give a little bit of a food that he's not interested in. Let's say, um, you know, I don't know, a stalk of celery, whatever it might, with peanut butter on it, right? And you give him that, and then you reward him with a, a, a decent amount of, let's say, the non-dairy ice cream. And now you will, next time, you're going to make it two stalks of celery or a stalk of celery and two slices of apple. And you gradually increase the foods that you want him to consume while you're always rewarding with a medium average size, size of some sort of reward. And then over time, what you do is you increase the things that you want him to eat and you gradually, very gradually decrease those desserts or those rewarding foods. And let's be honest, guys, that's what we do with our kids. Anyway. And that's that's just how we how we do everything with food, right? If we all were let, allowed, we would all just eat massive amounts of, of dessert or whatever it is that we all like. But in this case, what you're doing is just regulating and you're shifting it. And a lot of times parents don't do this. You know how to do this. You just don't do it because you're scared that he will stop eating. I promise you. He will not stop eating. In fact, the reverse will happen. He will open up and start consuming other types of foods. Um, I'll tell you, my ch my son was about, I think, maybe two or three. He had just started writing phonetically. And it was he was drinking a massive amount of milk. And at this time, I was like, what is going on? He's an adult now. He's 23. So this is years and years ago. 
And I would look and I noticed that he had these dark rings around his eyes and all he ever wanted was milk. And I was like, you know what? We're going to get rid of milk and we're going to see what happens. And this is 23 years ago. We didn't have that many choices. Like the only other milk that was out there was soy. And if you were lucky, you could get a hold of almond milk, right? But it was very hard to get a hold of. Nowadays, there's everything. There's soy and rice. Oh, yeah. In those days, we had rice milk, actually, as well. But like you have almond, you have oats, you have so many options. Um, and so what I did is I replaced his milk with uh, initially soy, and then I realized soy is not good for boys, and then I switched it over to rice milk. And he started, <laughs> there was a period of time where he wasn't allowed to drink any milk at all, and he really missed it. And But he had started to develop an appetite, and now he was eating other foods. And then when I gave him his first, uh, like, you know, introduction to rice milk, and I sweetened it a little bit with, I put a little bit of vanilla in there and made it taste good. And I gave it to him and he just lost his mind that he's now allowed to drink a new milk. And he started making posters, which I've kept. And they were all over the house and it was in phonetic, you know, little three-year-old writing, the new milk, everyone should try it. <laughs> So, you know, what I'm saying is basically you'll be surprised that how our kids, their appetite changes. They open up when you take away those things that are they are allergic to. And not only that, their, their mind clears up. I mean, that's the more important aspect of these diets for me. I've seen it over and over and over with our kids. When you change their diet, take away the things that are we say allergic, but they're causing them to be a little cloudy and so on. And they're, they're consuming large amounts of these things. They actually, it's almost like they wake up and they start learning a lot better and paying attention to things. And, and it's a whole different game. So don't be afraid of doing it. Just keep an eye on it and go with it and write in. Cause I know this is one of those things where we get scared and we reverse ourselves. Yeah. And so many people are writing in so many things. I just want to say um, too, you know, I, I, I want to jump on the bandwagon that my son is still um, gluten and dairy free. Um, and every once in a while we'll do a challenge and, and my son is 18, but um, you know, when, when we took out gluten and dairy, and this is not true for everyone, but for him, we saw such a difference. His skin cleared up. He had terrible eczema. His skin cleared up and he started, he had been speaking, lost all of his language. And then he started adding five new words a day after we took out the, the dairy and, and the gluten. But I, for this mom, I, I, I'm sure that she's feeling a little bit panicked right now because to, as I look at the list of the 10 things that he will eat, when you take out dairy and you take out sugar, there's, there's literally yeah, nothing right, left. Yeah. 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 Except for the chicken soup with ramen noodles. And we have one mom who's writing in and saying, you know, that she's concerned because her child uh, gets anemia if, if she takes out food. So I want to make sure that everybody hears clearly what you said, that you're only, yeah. you're taking things out for just a period of time in order to increase them. But, uh, but I do want to say that there are now, because there are foods that are so much better that you can very sneakily change a couple of these things out for oh, something yeah. that's gluten and dairy free, and he won't even know the difference. That's so right. the grilled cheese you can do there are many breads that are out there and I will tell you it is, it's the wild, wild west of gluten-free breads because if what he likes is brown bread, which is, that's what it sounds like. There are different um, brands that might be better. Like there's a Canyon Bakehouse that makes some brown breads that are really soft and good and they toast up really wonderfully. I don't know what Nikki likes. Do you know what brand? She oh likes? yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. If you go to grocery stores in the frozen section, which is kind of uh -huh. an interesting part, they have these incredible um, English muffins that are gluten-free. And I got to tell you guys, they're way better than regular English muffins. They're fantastic. Right. And they actually have several different types too. Like they'll have flavored ones and so on. So, but they're in the frozen section and they're okay. kind of near where Ezekiel bread is, you know? Okay. 
which is another choice if they like oh, seated yes, kinds yes. of things. Um, my son, we tend to, he likes, uh, when we make French toast in the morning, he really likes um, the brand Be Free, mm -hmm. which is a brown bread. Um, and it makes really nice French toast. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but he really is loving right now the Trader Joe's gluten-free English muffins. Right. They're, they're very they, yeah. interesting and different. And of course, when we're making something that looks like a baguette or something like that, we like the Scar brand. If you like that white, mm. crusty, you know, artisanal bread, um, they make buns and things like that. Those you can usually get at Sprouts. But then when you get to the cheese, it's also, there are so many different alternatives. Yeah. We, yeah. we really like the chow cheese, but that is a, um, a, a, a tofu cheese. Um, and then there's also Daya makes a full brand, but That's follow cool. your heart. I think follow your heart. If you can get those, I'm not sure that they're available everywhere. They make a smoked, um, is it Munster that is just, uh, I think it's a smoked provolone actually, that it's absolutely, um, it's like talking dirty to me. It's so, <laughs> it's so good. So, um, anyway, you can make that grilled cheese sandwich for him fairly easily and that he won't notice it. And for the banana bread, I, you know, I, I breads from Anna should sponsor the show for the number of times that I have said their banana bread and their pumpkin bread, which are, it's a mix, but it's, it's gluten-free, it's nut-free, it's dairy-free, and it does have some honey, but it has no refined sugars in it. And it is the best thing. And for, for over a decade, I have been serving this to people and not telling them that it's gluten-free. And they go, this is the best banana bread I've ever had in my life. Honestly. Where did you get it? It's the breads from Anna. You almost ha always have to order directly from them, but they'll ship it to you. I buy it by the case and give mm -hmm. it as gifts because it's so good. Write that down. Oh no, I'm going to send some over to you um, for Nikki. I don't know why I didn't think to do that at Christmas time, but it's, it's really, it's, it's redonkulously good. You guys, it's just the best <laughs> thing ever. Um, we should do a whole show on breads for mana. Um, uh, so anyway, th those are the two that jump out at me that I'm like, easy peasy. He will be able to do those. Um, and, but, and the thing but, is, Shannon, sorry to interrupt, but like I see Amanda's okay. making coconut bliss that's sprout. You can add yes, things yes. to his diet, which I'm pretty sure he might, he will start to show interest in because like, you know, kids, like he, maybe he hasn't been exposed to some of these things. Yes, absolutely. And it is this weird sort of equation that when you take that thing out, when you take, cause this is all milk. And when you take that milk out, he's going to be able to taste other things. Yeah. And if you doubt that, um, go, we talked about this uh, three weeks ago before the, we went on break. Uh, what is the, what is the documentary? Supersize me. Um, <laughs> where, where a person who eats a good diet goes and eats just McDonald's for 30 days and you see the difference in him and he stops eating vegetables. He's like, I don't even want a vegetable anymore. Yeah. Um, because your, your palate, I, I don't know, it has some sort of effect upon you. And, Listen, I, you know, people used to come up to me in restaurants and they would watch my son eating vegetables, just shoving them in his mouth. And they would go, how is it that you do that? And, and I didn't know yeah. at the time it was because we weren't allowed, allowing him to eat sugar. We weren't allowing him to eat yeah. um, gluten and dairy. And so he would shove snow peas in his mouth like they were candy, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and so it, it does work. Obviously, Dr. Grampiche is, is, you know, not telling you to starve a child. Let's be very clear. Yeah, that is not absolutely. what she's saying at all. Absolutely. Okay. And I'm honestly, I'm, I'm like, anemia takes a, a while to, to get there. But certainly, as I said, initially, you would want to make sure that you are talking to your pediatrician and letting them know that you're working on this. And if you ever get to a point, and there are many dietitians, by the way, that can help you. It's not something that happens overnight, right? I just want to say that it's like, just like anything else that's effective, like ABA, it takes, it takes a while because you can't shock the child's system. Um, you know, I mean, it'll intrude in, in other aspects of his, his life. But so you want to do it gradually and you want to give it time but I will say, you guys, in my mind, if there are two things that are the most effective things on how our kids uh, learn and thrive in life, one is ABA and the other one is the appropriate foods. 
Like if you can change what your child eats, that's probably one of the most powerful things you can do for your child and, and for ourselves at this point. I mean, you know, I am one of those people that I like to learn about what's going on in our in our environment. And everything I study and I read and I listen to has to do with the toxicity of our food and our environment and unfortunately our soil now where our food grow grows in that soil and all that. So, you know, if you're doing this, look at it as a positive step. Don't look at it as a I'm stuck because my child won't eat anything. Look at it as take control of it and say, you know what, I'm going to get my child on a majorly healthy diet this year. And this is my goal. And then go for it. There we go. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.